Well, good morning, Herondale Presbyterian Church, and happy Palm Sunday. It's so good to be with you all on this Palm Sunday. Um, I know you and I, we all wish we could be gathered together, but um, I'm glad that we are together virtually at least. This, I guess, marks the fourth week of not being able to meet um, to gather together to worship in our sanctuary. I hope everybody's doing okay. It's a, it's a difficult situation, but um, I know uh, being in contact with you all helps a lot, and I hope these little offerings help you all get through this as well. So, I um, wanted to let you know a couple of things. The, uh, the Holy Week, this begins Holy Week for us, and we are going to have a service on Thursday night, a virtual service online. Um, I will uh, be doing communion, actually. So um, I want each of you, if you'd like to participate, I want each of you to get uh, the bread and juice uh, that you would like to share with this. And we'll all sit at our own tables in our own homes and share communion on Thursday night. That'll be a special service. And then Easter, we have a big, uh, big celebration. The denomination, the PCUSA denomination, has put together an Easter service that they are going to give to every congregation. Uh, it'll be a video service, and it's an opportunity for every Presbyterian congregation in the country to join together and worship and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord together. Um, unprecedented, it, and it's so much about this situation is unprecedented in a negative way but never in the history of the denomination have we been able to come together as one, um, every Presbyterian in the country, and worship together. So that's something to look forward to, and I'll be telling you more about both of those services as the week progresses. Palm Sunday is part of the Easter story. It's the beginning, uh, in many ways, of the Easter story, of the beginning of Holy Week. And because it's a story, and a story that we all know so well, I wanted to start our service today with that old familiar gospel song, I Love to Tell the Story. <clears throat> go to God in prayer with a traditional uh, Palm Sunday prayer from our own Presbyterian uh, worship book, and then we'll follow that up with the Lord's Prayer. Please join me in that. Let us go to God in prayer. 
We praise you, O God, for your redemption of the world through Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Let these be signs of his victory and grant that we who celebrate this day may follow him in the way of the cross, that dying and rising with him, we may enter into your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever, and who taught his disciples when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as I said, this is a Sunday of stories. Um, and no better way to share this story than to read the scripture. The, um, all the Gospels have a version of this. And um, I'm going to share with you the version uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. <clears throat> Listen now for the word of God. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, in continuing with our, our theme of telling stories, I wanted to share a story with you this morning. Um, you know, I know a lot of you have your whole families gathered around watching this, and I wanted to honor that. I wanted to do something specifically for the children this morning. I hope the adults enjoy this as well. But this is a story of Palm Sunday that was from the eyes of the donkey that Jesus rode in on. It's intended to be a children's story and was actually written by uh, a community that I served in Virginia called the Wild Goose Christian Community. We were a little different. But, uh, it was a casual and, and very Appalachian gathering. We would sit around uh, in a circle of rocking chairs and, and worship together. And uh, one of the nice things about little groups like that is sometimes you can do things together that the larger groups cannot. And so um, one evening we began uh, and, and several of the members finished it, but we began as a group this children's story of Palm Sunday through the eyes of the donkey. And I would like to share that with you now as another perspective on Palm Sunday. It was such a cool, bright, early morning with clear skies and a slight breeze that Joe couldn't help himself. He bucked and tossed his head as he ran around and around his mother, first one way and then the other. He was feeling frisky and full of life. His mother, Maria, called to Joe, come eat your oats, little one. You'll need your strength today. Today's going to be special. As Joe trotted up to his mother, he asked, why will I need my strength today? Isn't this just like any other day? What's so special about today? Isn't this a beautiful day? I just want to run and run, kick up my heels. Maria answered, yes, it is a beautiful day, but today's special because Jesus has requested that you, a little donkey, carry him into Jerusalem. As a king, he could ride into the city on a big stallion with a silver and gold studded bridle and saddle. And yet he's requested you. Joe's eyes grew as big as his feed bucket when he heard this news. 
Oh, mama, I'm scared. Nobody's ever ridden on my back before. I may not be able to carry Jesus. What if he falls off and gets hurt? It'd be my fault, and I would have disappointed him. You've grown so big and strong, you can do this. You can do more than you realize. Be brave. I know you can do what Jesus asks of you, and I'm proud of you. All you have to do is follow Jesus' wishes, and you'll be safe. Oh, the disciples will be here any minute. Let me wash your face so you'll look your best. Oh, mama. As Maria was washing Joe's face, they saw the disciples, Andrew and Philip, walking up the road. When Andrew and Philip got to Joe and Maria, they spoke reassuringly to the donkeys as they approached and attached a rope to the halters. When all was ready, they turned and started back up the road to take Joe and Maria to where Jesus was waiting for them at the Mount of Olives. Joe felt secure with the two men. Perhaps that feeling of well-being came from their very nature. Andrew was known to be gentle in leading people to Jesus, and Philip had a kind heart and would do anything for others. Little Joe and Maria chatted as they walked along the dusty road with the disciples. Where are we going? asked little Joe. Maria snuggled in close to Joe. Let me tell you about the time I carried Jesus' mother Mary on my back, and her husband Joseph walked alongside us all the way to Bethlehem. Mary was expecting a baby any minute. I was anxious about getting her someplace safe before her baby was born. The night we arrived in Bethlehem, the town was overflowing with other travelers. There was no room for them anywhere, no room at all, and we looked everywhere. Finally, some kind person offered them a stable, so we all stayed together in that stable. I saw Jesus be born and heard all the angels sing praises to him. The dark night became as bright as noontime on a cloudless day. There was a big, brilliant star shining right down on the stable, shining right on us. As if that were not enough, the shepherd showed up to kneel and worship the new king. Oh, how glorious that night was. And to think, you're now going to have the honor of serving the same Jesus, King of Kings. When the four of them arrived at the Mount of Olives, a small crowd was waiting. Andrew and Philip led Joe to a man in the center of the gathering. Joe realized without even being told that this man was the Jesus that Maria spoke of. There was just something about him, something warm and inviting, a gentleness that put Joe at ease right away. Joe lowered his head and allowed Jesus to scratch his ears and speak softly to him. Someone placed a cloak on Joe's back, and Jesus mounted him. To Joe's surprise, having Jesus sitting on his back felt just right, like this moment was what Joe was born for. In fact, Joe was so comfortable that he felt he could go with Jesus anywhere. With Jesus astride Joe, they started for Jerusalem with the disciples and a large group of people walking alongside and following them. And all was going well until Jesus and Joe rounded a corner just outside the gates. And suddenly Joe spread his legs and came to an abrupt stop. His eyes got as big as saucers and bugged out in surprise. He'd never seen so many people. And all in one place, too, and so much noise with a lot of loud shouting, Joe was really, really scared. He didn't understand that the people were calling out praises to Jesus, the King of Kings. Joe just heard a lot of noise, loud noise. His ears twitched from front to back, then back to front, first the left ear and then the right ear, and then his ears lay flat against his head. He was ready to buck, turn tail, and run. Jesus spoke to him in a soft, firm voice. It's all right, Joe. Believe me, these people mean you no harm. Move along just like we planned. Trust me, and we'll get through this together. Joe took first one step and then another and then another. And pretty soon he understood that he really was safe, just like Jesus told him. And they continued toward Jerusalem. As they got closer to the city gates, the people began taking off their cloaks and tossing them onto the road, 
while others tossed palm branches onto the roadway. The road was quickly completely covered with cloaks and palm branches, and the cloaks and palm branches felt strange and slippery underfoot, and Joe suddenly sidestepped first to the left and then to the right, and once again he stopped in his tracks. Jesus gently stroked Joe's neck and calmly urged him to resume his journey, saying, Continue on the road just like you were doing, stepping carefully to avoid falling. I'm right here with you, and all's well. Trust me. So Joe gingerly took a few steps, and pretty soon he was moving along, feeling more confident as Jesus stroked his neck and let him know he was right there with Joe. And by the time he arrived in the city with Jesus riding safely on his back, he was feeling confident and safe and just a little bit pleased that he had been able to overcome his fears and follow Jesus' lead. Once they all arrived in the city, Jesus dismounted and two strangers took Joe back to where they left Maria. And then they led both Maria and Joe back to the place where they were when Andrew and Philip came to get them. The men fed Joe and Maria some oats and thanks for their service to their Lord, and then left them alone to discuss the day's events. Tell me all about your day. What was, was Jesus kind to you, said Maria. Joe told his mother all about his day, ending with, I was so proud to serve Jesus and carry him into the city. When I was frightened by all the people, the shouting and the hand-waving and the strange cloaks and palm branches on the road, Jesus reassured me and I felt safe. Can you believe that Jesus, the King of Kings, chose me, a lowly donkey, to give him a ride into the great city? Maria looked warmly at her son and licked his forehead. Yes, I can believe it, my beloved little Joe. Sometimes the least shall be the greatest in God's kingdom. Her words echoed in his heart as he snuggled down into the clean, soft straw and drifted off to sleep. Through the eyes of a donkey. You know, the, the palms, palms have been part of celebrations for thousands of years. Uh, the, the Bible speaks of them often um, throughout uh, ancient times, the palm branches symbolized both goodness and victory. So it was very appropriate that they were used on Palm Sunday. Uh, they were often depicted on coins and they were um, put on important buildings, drawn and carved into important buildings. Uh, Solomon, Solomon himself uh, put palm branches on the walls and the doors of the temple. He carved them into them. You can read about that in First Kings. And it goes through all the way to the end of the Bible and where Revelation says that at the end times, people from every nation raise palm branches to honor Jesus. So it is a long and deep tradition, these, these palm branches that we like on Sunday mornings of Palm Sunday. Sometimes when you couldn't get palm branches in the colder climates, they would substitute other branches. It's been boxwood and willow and you and olive wood and all kinds of green branches have been substituted for the palms of Palm Sunday. And even though it's a deep, deep tradition and one that we all love and enjoy each year, I'm afraid that Patty McKeska is the only one that has our palms this morning. So Patty, I hope you are waving them in great joy for all of us because we don't have palms. We don't have palms because we can't get together and do our, usually, our usual Palm Sunday service. But I do want to tell you something, and I'm sure I'm not the first one that has thought of this, but we may not have palm fronds, palm branches, but we all have the palms of our hands. And we can use our palms in many ways to praise God and to share the love of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you just a few. Let me tell you just a few. We can, we can fold our palms together and pray. We can lift up our palms and we can clap them together and praise God. We can use our palms to reach out and extend them in the right hand of fellowship and grasp them when we can all get together again and we'll say, may the peace of Christ 
be with you. We can use our palms to pass on Bibles and books that celebrate the gospel and tell of the love of Jesus Christ. We can use our palms to reach out to a brother or sister in need and lend a helping hand, help them up out of whatever trouble they're in. We can use our palms to wave. We can wave, welcome, come on, come with me. Or we can wave, God speak, may God be with you. We can use our palms to warn, warn against evil and sin. We can use our palms to give, to offer in love and generosity. We can use those same palms to receive from others and from God the grace and love that they share and hold that close to us. We can use our palms to wrap around our sisters and brothers in love and hold them tight and bring them close to us when we can do that once more. Because you see, God himself holds each of us in the palm of his hand. And with that, I want to share with you one more song. This is one that I hope you'll sing along with me as well. One so appropriate to this Palm Sunday in the way that I just mentioned it. It's called, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the little bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the little bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, family. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole wide world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. It's been so good to be with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And as our blessing as we leave, I want to, I want to offer a blessing of the palms, not the palm fronds, but our own palms. I bless you with the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ that comes to you. Receive it. I bless you with prayers that I lift up in my heart for you each and every day. And I know you do for me as well. Mostly, I lift my palms to you and wave Godspeed until we meet again. Blessings on all of you.